It is Thursday, and we all know what that means. It's time for Purple Magic, the podcast, <laughs> Christmas edition. We all hope you had a very, very merry Christmas, and however you choose to celebrate it on this festive period. <laughs> <laughs> I keep seeing you in the reflection and it's so funny. <laughs> it's so fun that it's like it's like propped up on the back of my jumper. <laughs> As you all know, we are gonna begin with a story of the week. Oosh. And this one is for the festive holidays and it's a really sweet one. I thought it would be a nice nice little little short one. Family found a baby owl living in their Christmas tree. Well, I hope they took it in. Yeah. I took it out. Took it the out. intruder had spent four days hidden in the tree in the family home before it was discovered. One family got a little something extra when they pi- when they picked out their tree this year. A baby owl. It was not until four days after they had put it up in the living room and decorated it before they found the intruder. Now we have three dogs, Michelle White told YK, YDKW, YDK, WDK, YDKWDKYTV. <laughs> Michelle said, I have three dogs. We use this room non-stop, watching TV, the kitchen's right there, and no indication. Carpet cleaner Bobby Hayes noticed the bird after plugging in a piece of equipment and seeing the tree start to sway. The owl was literally sitting on a lower limb. It crawled into the tree further and took me several minutes to find it. Oh, that's fucking huge. How did they not see that in the tree? Oh. It's just a really close-up photo. Oh. He said photos to Mrs. White, who said she was glad he was there to deal with the animal. Well, they didn't decorate their tree very well. It must have been right in the middle. Yeah, but you've got you, you can't really do it. You can't just be putting stuff on the outside. You've got to get the layers in, get the tinsel going, get the lights in the right place. Yeah, it must not have been. Well, it's a. Look at it. Look at it. Do they have a name? Did they name it? No. Mr. Hayes safely released the owl into the back garden. It must have been so sleepy. They should have found another tree to put it in. Well, he might have put it in a tree in the back garden. Maybe. Oh, I would love to find a little owl in my Christmas tree. Me too. I think it would be the perfect present. Yeah, I don't know. I'd... Maybe not perfect, but it would be up there. Maybe it would give you a little wish. Or some wise it's words. Just, it's just an owl. It's a Christmas owl. <laughs> it's not Christmas owl, it's just in the Christmas tree. Yes, it's a Christmas owl, it could have granted you a wish, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've got a neck brace on. <laughs> I liked how short that one was. I like it, I think that was enough. I think it was really sweet. <laughs> it was really, really nice. It was kind. It was. was. kind news? Yeah. Finally. Something bloody positive. Yeah, I know. Now the next one... <clears throat> This one goes a little bit deeper, which is why I wanted to pick a little bit more of a lighter one. This is this is our pub logic section now, guys. Oh, I was going to say another story. No, no, oh, no. Okay. <clears throat> right, this one really boot me out. It's not scary. Okay. It's just like makes you feel a bit odd. Mm-hmm. These are not my memories. Right, so us sitting on this sofa, we have memories here. How many other people have sat on this sofa and created memories here? Probably quite a few. How crazy is that, though? That other people's lives are just, like, revolving around ours. Like, people have sat on this today. Yeah. I think when I... At first, I was kind of like, well... Yeah. (laughs) But, like, I think of it as, like... Even when you're walking down the street or you're on a bus... Yeah. Like, you're so insignificant to everybody else. And, like, they have so many things in their life. Like, they have their own life. Yeah. It's weird. It's really weird. It is genuinely insane. Like, when you think about it, like, if you go into someone's house, they'll have, like, core memories on those stairs or, like, in that bedroom or under that stair, specifically. Yeah. I don't know why you would be friends with Harry Potter, but... It's, It's even, like, it's even, like... How, when I, I got when we got moved out of the house, yeah, like you saw how upset I was, yeah, and you were upset too. But it's weird because you spent so much time there, yeah, but it meant so much more to me. And I'd only lived there like a year longer than you had, two years yeah. longer than you. 
Like, it's just how that is a really weird thought. And I also like to think sometimes, like, I wonder what I've done that's had a, an effect on someone's, like, day. Yeah. Or, like, even if you're on the bus and you, like, move up to give someone a seat. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That looks cute. Um, but, like, it, say if you move up to give someone a seat <laughs> on the bus, they could have been having, like, the worst day ever. Yeah. And it makes me think about, you know, you always see those stories and it's, like, it's kind of sad, but it's a deep question. But it's, like, those people are, like, oh, I was thinking about ending my life today. And I was, and then someone smiled at me. Yeah. And, like, it made me feel like I, I meant something. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. You can do the tiniest little thing and it can change, the like, the path of someone's in complete life. Yeah. And you'll never know. Absolutely. I do genuinely think, like... Like, the fucking people who sent my Wenzels wrong again. I will never go near that shop. I will still order from there. <laughs> I will never go in that shop again. Because, like, imagine if, if for some reason they asked for my name for an order. Yeah. Imagine if they saw it, and then they found out that they'd been sending me the wrong order for weeks on end. Yeah. They ruined my mood a lot of times, and they didn't even know. But they should know. And I think they do know by now, and I think they're starting to do it on purpose, actually. Mm. Maybe you should order from a different one, or so see if they get it right. I can only get it from that one. Oh. I did. That's sad. Is it the Union Broadway one? Mm. So many times. One time I was on my period, and I started crying. It's all their fault. Yeah, that is rough. Just read the fucking label, man. It's a receipt that says salt and vinegar crisps. Bro, I went into Subway last night. You know, the 24-hour one. This poor bloody man. The whole, like, gas station was completely empty. But this man was in this fucking Subway section. And he had receipt after receipt after receipt coming out of this fucking machine so much that it stacked into a pile <coughs> that was like furling mm. next to the cookies and I <laughs> touched it <laughs> and it all fell over <laughs> and you could have ruined his day but that reminds me as well do you remember when we were on the live and I got in and I was like oh there was a delivery driver yeah. and he checked the bag and said oh there's a sandwich missing that one choice of action could have saved some turmoil in somebody's house. Absolutely. Like, just, like, that, they're, they're slightly more obvious things. Like, that genuinely could just affect someone's day. But, like, like I say with the analogy of, like, moving and giving someone a seat on the bus. Yeah. Or, like, saying thank you to a bus driver. Like, could be having the worst day ever. Yeah. And you've, like, given that little glimmer of hope. I think that's the thing. I think it's just, like, just be kind. Mm. And I know it's hard when you're having a bad day, but, like... You would want someone to be kind to you when you are having a bad day. So if you're having a good day, just be a little bit extra kind. Mm. Especially, like, I always relate it back to hospitality, but I always think when someone's being rude to me, I give them three or four chances. Mm. I'm like, right, they could be having a bad day. They could just be stressed. They could just need to, like, sit down. Like, I'm insignificant to them. They just want to order. They don't want to talk. That's fine. But some people Mm. need to stop treating me like I'm a piece of shit. Because I always think this about university students, right? Regardless of whether they're working in a shop or in like a fish and chip shop or in a bar or in a warehouse or driving or anything, people always forget that they've just finished work. Like, again, using the pub as an example, they've just finished work at like five. They've Mm. come in and treating me like a piece of shit, but they forget that I've maybe done one job in the morning, been at uni all day, then we'll be here all day and doing another job. Mm. It's like they just don't give a fuck. And it's so mean. And I always think about that when it's people that are working like in hospitals or people that are working in hospitality or a customer based thing. Mm. Like it's just, and even like people on the phone, like when you get, when you call like Virgin or something, yeah. the person who answers the phone has probably had people screaming at them all day all long. Day. So yeah, they might be a bit rude or snappy or something, but you just have to think about what they've been through. Mm. Like the amount of times I've wanted to say to a customer, like, do you not realize how fucking tired I am right now? And yeah. I'm trying to put on a smile and make sure you're having a good day. And you've got absolutely no tolerance or thought about how the person you're talking to feels. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. Trauma dump there slightly. <laughs> oh no. Absolutely agreed. I just think it's so weird how, like, humans as people have just developed this, like, need for other for other humans. What do you mean? Obviously, it's not developed because it's, it's part of our DNA. But, like, we go around looking at other people and expecting them to care about us when they don't. Yeah. I, I always... I remember there was this... I've never been... To be fair, there was one point in my life where I had really bad anxiety... 
and really bad. And like, I, I say really bad, it was like, I had quite bad high functioning anxiety, so I could hide it very well. Mm -hmm. But then I got to a point where I was like, do you know what, I just don't care anymore. But I always remember reading this little book, oh, I can't remember what it was, um, and there was a whole section about that spotlight theory that yeah. I told you about a few times. But like, when you walk into a room, you think everyone is looking at you or judging you or like laughing at you. Mm. And it's like, actually, they just didn't even notice that you walked in. Like the majority of the time, stuff like anxiety is about things like that. And it's actually a sad thought, but you are completely insignificant to so many people. Mm. And like, <clears throat> even if you do something embarrassing, why the fuck would that person remember it? Yeah. In like more than, like even like, max a week later they've forgotten about it even Absolutely. like in news cycles and stuff like it just doesn't last long yeah and it definitely helped me just kind of move on and be like yeah why am i caring so much about that yeah it's so true it really is we're gonna move into our story time section of the um podcast <laughs> this is one that really tickles me when i remember it um me, me and Stella have a bit of a habit of making, uh, of telling people porky pies when we're out. Um, we didn't, we weren't even drinking. No, we were at this stone point. cold sober. Yeah, we we have a little bit of a habit of telling people porky pies. Um, nothing like, harmful. Yeah, like harmless ones. Yeah, completely harmless, and it's always about us. So it's not about like anybody else. No. But we were aware that yeah, you can actually go back and find the video that we filmed before this happened. We both had black cowboy hats on. Um, and this person that was quite drunk came in and basically start like they were they were being sweet about it, but like they were just going on about the fact that we were wearing these black cowboy hats. And I just <laughs> he was like, Oh, you look like you look like a like a depressed Dolly Parton or something. And I just turned around to him and I was like, We're in mourning. <laughs> and he was like, What? And I was like, My horse died. And he was like he was like devastated at the fact that he had like pushed this out of me. <laughs> so for the rest of the evening, and they came and sat with us, I was in mourning for my horse. Um, and that was why we were wearing black cowboy hats. Um, and the horse's name was Donkey. Uh, and I had, I had basically said that he, the, the, the glue factory had picked him up to that day, um, which is why we were truly mourning donkey um and they decided that they were gonna buy me some print sticks for christmas well, Maisie said originally that it was gorilla glue yeah but yeah then a, a few days later they came back in and they came up to me and they were like oh, how's Maisie's horse like, not like how's Maisie doing about her horse and i was like yeah it's just been a really tough week like um <laughs> Yeah, I think it was kind of difficult that people were making comments about it because she was trying to like look really happy, but <laughs> obviously it didn't, didn't work out. And they still, to this day, believe that Maisie had a horse called Donkey that died and got put into glue. Yeah. And they were like, can we see, would we be able to see a photo? And I was like, no, it's just too raw. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't ask me about riding him. Didn't ask me about anything. Just I just told them I had a horse and it died. And they were like, what did it die of? And I was like... <laughs> and then someone else asked me how old it was and I said two <laughs> um, it was so funny I just genuinely think lying to people like harmlessly can be so funny I told I told someone that um, our friend was a pro rugby player um, and the person that I ended up telling was the co-coach of the press team <laughs> well they loved you after that so it was they did like me, he yeah. called me a lying cow but in a fun way yeah <laughs> <laughs> my mum used to tell me that when she'd get on a plane she'd always make up a story like if they got chatting she'd make up different stories about who she was and what she did yeah and so many times she did an Irish accent on the plane ride the whole time once just to pretend she was Irish that's beautiful so mother that would be why I am yeah. now Book not pie. a liar but have lied <laughs> not pathological is a porcupine a porcupine <laughs> porcupine <laughs> oh me heed <laughs> no you heed Since it's just been Christmas, I thought I'd be a bit nicer to you. Yeah. <laughs> Sparkle and shine. That was yeah. an interesting sound. The Candius Canius. The Candius Canius. Wow. Why isn't it moving? Because the cream is sticking it in. 
That's just whipped cream. Okay. <laughs> What's it called? Camus Canius. Okay. Well, I'm gonna... You have to have it all together, that's the point. It's not very much. You've <laughs> <laughs> got some cream on your lip. <laughs> what was that? Just cherry sandburger and whipped cream. <laughs> oh, that was. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed this episode of Pub Logic, and make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and also go and follow us on Spotify. We hope you enjoy celebrating the new year. We also hope you've had a very fun festive period, and I hope you enjoy our crowns. <laughs>